Good day. Welcome to our fourth lesson in chemistry for engineers. And now, we're going to talk about nuclear chemistry and energy. First off, our learning objectives are for you to able to define nuclear chemistry and other associated terms to write and balance nuclear reactions. Explain radioactive decay. Solve problems involving radioactive decay and help life. Explain the chemistry of nuclear energy and solve half life. Our topic outline nuclear chemistry, radioactive decay, half life, nuclear reaction, and finally, conversion of nuclear energy. Nuclear chemistry. Since the chemistry of an atom is determined by the number and arrangement of its electrons, the properties of the nucleus are not of primary importance to chemists. In the simplest view, the nucleus provides the positive charge to bind the electrons in atoms and molecules. However, a quick reading of any daily newspaper will show you that the nucleus and its properties have an important impact on our society. In this lesson, we will consider those aspects of the nucleus about which everyone should have more or some knowledge, especially for you as an electrical engineering student. Several aspects of the nucleus are immediately imp impressive. Its very small size, its very large density, and the magnitude of the energy that holds it together. The radius of a typical nucleus appear to be 10 raised to negative 13 centimeter. This can be compared to the radius of a typical atom which is on the order of 10 raised to 8 centimeter. A visualization will help you appreciate the small size of the nucleus. In the nucleus of the hydrogen atom were the size of a ping pong ball, the electron in the first shell orbital would be on average 0 0.5 kilometer away. The density of the nucleus is equally impressive, approximately 1.6 times 10 raised to 14 gram per cubic centimeter. A sphere of nuclear material the size of a ping pong ball would have a mass of 2.5 billion tons. In addition, the energies involved in nuclear processes are typically millions of times larger than those associated with normal chemical reactions. This fact makes nuclear processes very attractive for feeding the voracious energy appetite of our civilization. Atomus, the Greek root word of atoms, means indivisible. It was originally believed that the atom was the ultimate indivisible particle of which all matter was composed. However, as Lord Rutherford shown in 1911, that the atom is not homogeneous, but rather has a dense, positively charged center surrounded by electrons. Subsequently, scientists have learned that the nucleus of the atom can be subdivided into particles called neutrons and protons. And in fact, in the past two decades, it has become apparent that even the protons and neutrons are composed of smaller particles called quarks, wherein neutrons is consists of two down quarks and one up quarks, while protons is consists of two up quarks 
and one down quarks. Anyway, we were not going to talk about more about quarks. Which is a little information. For most purposes, the nucleus can be regarded as a collection of nucleons or neutrons and protons. And the internal structures of these particles can be ignored. The number of protons in a particular nucleus is called the atomic number. And the sum of the neutrons and protons is mass number. Atoms that have identical atomic number but different mass number values are called isotopes. However, we usually do not use the singular form isotope to refer for, our, for a particular member of a group of isotopes. Rather, we use the term nuclide. A nuclide is a unique atom represented by the symbol this, wherein A is the mass number of the nuclide, say is the atomic number, and X is the element. Nuclear chemistry is the sub-discipline of chemistry that is concerned with changes in the nucleus of elements. These changes are the source of radioactivity and nuclear power. There are essentially three sources of radioactive elements. First, primordial nuclides are radioactive elements whose half-lives are comparable to the age of our solar system and were present at the formation of Earth. These nuclides are generally referred to as naturally occurring radioactivity and are derived from the radioactive decay of thorium and uranium. Second, Cosmogenic nuclides. These are atoms that are constantly being synthesized from the bombardment of planetary surfaces by cosmic particles. Primarily, protons ejected from the sun and are also considered natural in their origin. The third one, anthropogenic nuclides are results from human activity in the production of nuclear power, nuclear weapons, or through the use of particles accelerators. Nuclear energy, also called atomic energy, refers to an energy that is released in significant amount in process that affect atomic nuclei, the dense cores of atom. It is distinct from the energy of other atomic phenomena such as ordinary chemical reactions, which involves only the orbital electrons of atoms. One method of releasing nuclear energy is by controlled nuclear fission in device called reactors. The image at the lower, uh, at the lower portion, at the right, is an image of a reactor. These reactors are now operating in many parts of the world by the production of electricity. Another method for obtaining nuclear energy is by controlled nuclear fusion. This figure at the upper right is an image of a nuclear fusion reactor.
nuclear energy has been released explosively by both nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Now, try this out. Write the nucleate symbol for the following isotope using this notation. And write your answer in the comment section. <laughs> 